Hello, this is Jeff Neville for Selective Imagery. Welcome to Nikon Z9 Firmware 2.1 with Birds in Flight. This is a follow-up to a previous video that I just came out with recently talking about how well the new firmware on the Z9 worked for small birds. And I had requests for what about birds in flight. So I'm going to share that with you today with uh, what I've been able to capture in terms of birds in flight since the firmware came out. Unfortunately, there's no small birds. Um, the turns have not been making an appearance and the um, and, uh, barn swallows uh, have not been out. So kind of limited to some of the larger birds, which still move at a pretty good pace. But a lot of the problem was the camera occasionally losing um, jumping from the eye or the body of the bird to the background even though the background wasn't necessarily really close to the bird. So I can at least show you pictures that would prove that that problem has been resolved and that was one of the biggest problems. I mean I've taken hummingbirds with the version 2.0 and not had any issue with that so um, just uh, to let you know. So I'm going to share with you some pictures and do a little narration like I did on the previous video. Hopefully you'll get something out of it. And I appreciate your time. Since autofocus is such a stressful subject, I'm going to calm you down with some pictures of some spoonbills here in the very early morning. And we switch over to some wood storks along with some great egrets. They're just hanging out together. And finally, we go to a shot that's just of some plants along the bank with a reflection of the moon in the background that I thought was very pleasing. Now we'll get into the serious stuff. Great blue heron taken off, obviously not a lot of speed. AF is right on the eye, perfect. Here there's two flying off, the one to the left is in focus, the one to the right is not. Now these are shot at f5.6 and I do a lot of shooting at f5.6. And this one here, the wings of the spoonbill are blurry because these are all very, very, very early in the morning. And I'm at like 1 640th of a second, like ISO 3500 or better. And I'm getting these shots. I mean, and I don't get them all. And it's not because of the autofocus. It's because if, if the bird is flying, 1 640th of a second isn't going to do it some of the time. So, you know, the ibis here, the eye is tack sharp. And you can look at the different backgrounds because one of the problems with version 2.0 was even though, you know, you're following and tracking the bird in flight, you got. Uh, the tree line in the background and all of a sudden you know it could bird turns a certain way it bounces from the body or the eye into the background and you can't get it to come back to the bird again that's not a problem anymore and you can see here you know the trees are more defined um, here you've got vertical uh, grasses that would be another thing that it would tend to jump to uh, water sometimes could become a problem and you can tell from this series of shots that they're, you know, these eyes are, are tack sharp, absolutely tack sharp, wide open. And, uh, you know, like this image here with all these vertical uh, trees, many a time, man, it would jump off the bird and go to, go to one of those trees and it doesn't do that anymore. So. Uh, my opinion is the, the AF for birds in flight is very, very good. Now, I didn't really have any small birds to take, uh, but I took the ones I could find with a lot of different backgrounds. In this case, you know, this one's in the sky and, uh, you know, never had a problem with the ones in the sky anyway, but I figured I'd throw that in. Now, this is a different, this is a different uh, situation. This is a tricolor heron. This image is cropped severely using the 500 PF on the Z9. And one thing the Z9 does very well, and some guy with a lot more hair that's really fluffy that has a channel, talked about comparing how well the Z9 actually could pick up on the eye of a subject from a farther distance than some of the other brands. 
you know, here you got a real busy background. You got a bird that isn't taking up a lot of the frame. I mean, this is probably a 50% crop or better. Um, at a minimum, this image would, would be a 300 DPI uh, resolution uh, for an 8x12 print. So that gives you an idea of how much it's been cropped. And it's, it's tack sharp. I mean, this bird is tack sharp, whether it's over the water with uh, stuff in the background or whether it's right near the background, it's, it's staying on the bird. It's, it's able to focus on the eye, even when the bird is relatively small. A tricolor heron is not, is not a big bird, you know, obviously bigger than a, a swallow or something like that, but it's, it's not like it's a great blue heron or a spoonbill. So here's another series of shots, and this one's like coming at you, which is when you usually have the most problem getting a good autofocus lock. No issues at all. And so you're going to see a, a series of shots here um, of this great egret. And really, no problem at all. And a nice blurred out background, shooting wide open with the 500 PF. Really no complaints at all. I know there's quite a few shots in here, but I'm, I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to show you that you get repetition. A lot of these shots are taken in order, you know, from shooting, you know, probably, I guess I'd probably, I usually shoot um, in low speed, which I have set for 10 frames a second. So you're seeing, seeing a series of shots, probably shot at 10 frames per second. Now this is a snowy egret that's in the sky that's tack sharp and that's it for the presentation in terms of the images but I think you're gonna find that the AF is significantly improved even though they consider it a minor upgrade it is a consider considerable improvement over what we had addresses the problems that a lot of us who do birds complained about and um, I think everybody's going to be very, very happy overall. And it's not perfect. I mean, sometimes you may not be able to grab focus on something as quick as you want. And this stuff happens, but it, it happens with everybody. I mean, there is no such thing as a perfect camera. And uh, what I found is most of the shots I get that I, that I have to toss out is because I'm shooting at 6.30 in the morning. I can't use a fast shutter speed because I don't want to be shooting at ISO 12,500 if I can help it. Bad enough, I might be at ISO 3,500 to 4,000. Um, so I choose to take the risk and shoot a low shutter speed and, and pan with the subject when it's flying and hope that I get it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Unfortunately, I can't afford fast glass. I mean, I have a 70 to 200 2.8, that doesn't have the reach I need. So I have the 500 PF, which is 5.6. I got the 1 to 400. And unfortunately, I'm not one that can afford the 12 to $15,000, you know, 600 F4 type lens, which I would love to have. So I have to work with what I have. And because I have to work the scene and I have to work within a set of limitations, sometimes I win and sometimes I lose. So um, a, a lot of the shots that I have to toss are because I had to make a conscious decision whether I want to be dealing with an ISO 12,000 uh, number or higher just to have a little extra shutter speed or do I want to hope that I panned really well and was able to capture the subject. So everybody's different. Everybody has a different approach. Everybody has a different set of lenses that they use. Uh, some people are fortunate and can have the really fast glass, makes makes it a lot easier uh, for them when they're shooting at 6.30. Uh, when it's 6.30 in the morning where, where I shoot, the sun is up, but it has not risen above the tree line yet. So it's hidden behind the trees, so you basically get erratic splotches of light as the sun pokes through some of the openings in the trees so it makes it for really interesting lighting situations and some difficult lighting situations so 
you just do the best you can. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got anything out of it, please like, subscribe, share it with other people, and uh, comment. Give me suggestions. If it's something I can reasonably do, I'll be happy to do it. Uh, I don't plan into getting into the lens review category of uh, YouTubers, but I like to just share content. But I thought this autofocus uh, scenario and upgrade was too important not to have a couple segments to discuss it. So as I always say, enjoy life, capture some of it. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks again.